Today I'll show you how to turn the self-driving car simulation into a racing game where we control the main car and AI controls the others. The game will have the usual things, a countdown timer, a way to monitor the progress, and the scoreboard. But what it won't have is collisions between the cars. I don't want to implement those because on racing day everything should be fair. Like if some other AI car smashes into yours, you won't like it. So no collisions. But it's okay, they're not always important. Like if you ever played Trackmania, they don't collide there either. And it's a really fun game. Speaking of which, I found this video where someone makes an AI for Trackmania. It's really related to what we've been doing here, but a few more input sensors and only two outputs because they're not binary values. Here, it can say how much to accelerate and how much to turn. Check it out. It's really cool, but uh, not now. Now it's time to start your editors and it's off to the races. Get it? Because we'll code the race in... Oh, no. Gonna code, debug and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. We're gonna make a new app, essentially, the racing game. So let's copy this index.html and rename it to race.html and probably a good idea to rename this other one as well maybe sim.html so that we know better what it's supposed to be the simulator and let's close that one but in race html let's change also the title here let's call it race like this let's open it in the browser and see if it works and it does you can see the title here, it changed. Now we're not gonna need here these buttons and this uh, neural network. Usually games don't have something like this in them. We're gonna go back here and um, the main JS file is also something that we're gonna need a copy of. So let's say this is going to be race JS here and let's copy here main JS and rename it race.js. Let's rename also this main.js to sim.js so that everything is as expected. And inside of sim.html, the title can also be maybe simulator. And here where we load, we are including sim.js now. Let's quickly check that this simulator also still works. And it does. So this is the simulator and this is the racing game and both of them work. Now let's remove those unnecessary things and let's close the simulator from up here and only keep race HTML and race JS open. And at the top, we won't need these vertical buttons or this network canvas. The minimap is good to have. Games usually have that. And now in race.js, I really want the car canvas to be the full screen here. And um, the height, the full height, let's move this actually here at the top. It makes more sense. And this network canvas doesn't exist anymore. So let's remove this network canvas everywhere we see it, at least up here. And this network context seems to be below there as well. Here used to visualize the neural network. We won't need any of that. Let's save and refresh. And the neural network is not there anymore. This canvas is supposed to fill the whole screen, but this minimap is somehow pushing it to that side. So let's style this minimap. I'm going to go here and give it a class. 
let's call it minimap and in style CSS at the bottom here let's define a class for the minimap and absolute positioning I want it on the right and at the bottom and let's see how this looks like good but uh, I would like to see it round so I'm going to give it a border radius of 50% like that and maybe it can also be transparent so let's give it an opacity of 50% as well like that now for this to be a game we need to generate the car that we can control and now all of these cars are AI so let's change this function that generates cars and add to it a type like this and this type is going to replace AI over here and now at the top where we generate the cars we can do something like generate one car that is controlled by the keys and let's concatenate with generate n cars that are controlled by AI and uh, 500 is quite a lot maybe 100 cars in a race are a better number even this is too high but let's just keep something like this for now and let's continue to clean up some things here so these comments here we don't need them anymore and um, the traffic is something that we won't use I don't want this racing game to have traffic around it would be too too chaotic and uh, the traffic appears also here in animate so um, drawing the traffic we don't need anything like that we can remove it this time is not used anymore it was needed by the neural network visualizer and here traffic we just send an empty array instead the cars will not need to worry about that now let's save and refresh and um, these cars are moving there but my car is also here it's uh, <laughs> It's there trying to catch up now. I'm controlling it with the keyboard. No, 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 no. Uh, oi, oi, oi. Okay. I'm able to catch up. And now, ah. Okay. Problem is, I want my car to be the focus, not this best car here. So, um, updating the best car here based on the fitness we don't need that anymore we just want to focus on my car which is the first car in this list let's actually rename this so rename symbol to my car because it makes more sense to have a reference of my car here good and it can even be a const because it doesn't change anymore refresh and now even if some of those cars are crazy going in front there uh, the canvas is showing my car that I am controlling with the keyboard okay I need to practice this now all these cars are the same color and I want to distinguish them a little bit so when generating the cars here we can also define a color for these and let's say that if it's an AI car then we're gonna get the random color otherwise we're gonna use blue because my car is blue and here we need to pass this color to the car constructor let's just see this car js real quick looks like max speed also needs to be given there and then color so i'm going to make some space here arrange things a little bit differently 
just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So that max speed, it was three there by default, but actually it's overwritten here. when we load the car info, so it doesn't really matter. But the color now, we are passing it to the car and we should be able to see this effect. Let's save and refresh. And you can see the cars have different colors now. And ours is easy to spot. These sensors there are not really needed. I think that they are mostly needed for debugging in general, so Let's just go to the car here and comment out this part. Maybe someday we're going to need it again, but in general, you don't need to see those. Save and refresh. And now this is OK. It's clean enough. Wow. <laughs> OK, that car is coming back. Some of those cars are shooting so crazy. If they could just do this one turn here, they would win. Now, the next thing we need to do is figure out the progress. Like, how far are we from solving this problem, from uh, reaching the end of the, um, of the race here? And I'm going to teach you how to figure that out. The first step will be to figure out what is this segment that is closest to the car. And we don't really have access to these segments at the moment. We need to keep track of them when building this red corridor here. So let's go to the code inside of the world and world.js. And here where we are generating the corridor, keep track of not just these segments that are essentially the borders. So let's write here an object with borders, these segments. And then the second thing will be the skeleton. I call skeleton those mid sections that were used to generate the envelopes. So these ones from here. Now we have to do some fixes so that this doesn't break anything. At the bottom where we are drawing the corridor, we have to pass here the borders. Those are the things that we want to draw. And back in race.js at the top, we are generating the corridor here and then using its borders to create this road borders variable here. So now everything should still work. Let's give it a quick test. Yeah, seems like it works. And let's get this segment now from the skeleton here. We'll do that at each animation loop. So at the end of animate here, we are going to figure out how to measure the progress by first getting the nearest segment and highlighting it on the map just to make sure that we get it correctly. So the segment that the car is on, we get it by finding the nearest segment to the car location from the world corridor skeleton, like this. And let's draw this car seg on the car context and let's make it red and give it a width of five. Now this is for debugging. Save and refresh. And that red line that you see there, see how it's updating? That's the nearest segment to the car. We don't want just the nearest segment. We want all the segments before this nearest segment. That's going to help us measure the progress. So here, after we have that nearest segment, we are going to loop through all of the segments, starting in the beginning and going through all the segments of the corridor's skeleton, like so. And let's take the segment at I 
and store it in a variable s so that we don't have to type this horrible thing many times. And now if s is equal to the car segment, we break. We don't need to go through the loop more than this. And let's move this part here before that so that we draw every segment s including the one at the car segment. Save and refresh. And now when driving, you see all of those previous segments are lighting up. And we just need to add up their lengths and that will be the progress relative to the full length of the track. It's quite easy. But still something needs to be figured out. Uh, this current segment where the car is here, we only need to keep the part up till where the car kind of is. So we are going to project the car to this segment, onto this segment, and keep just the first part of that segment. That will be the final trick needed here. So if we are dealing with this car segment here, we can do a projection. We project on S the car location like this. And let's debug and draw that point first to see if it works. Save and refresh. And now you see that black dot there following the car. exactly in the car's location there. And let's keep just the first part of that segment. So first part of segment is going to be a new segment starting at s.p1 and going to that projected point. Now let's draw here, let me copy this and draw this first part of the segment here. Rename this to first part of segment. And here we're going to have an uh, else clause. And we'll move this drawing here. So if we are dealing with that special segment, then we just draw the first part. Otherwise, we draw the full segment and we do break when we reach that car segment. So it doesn't go over that. Let's save refresh and now you can see exactly what we need so we can start measuring the progress that the car is doing here and i'm going to store it as an attribute of the car itself so before we start doing this i'm going to say my car progress is zero and now we need to add all of these segment lengths from here and the first part of the segment from there so my car progress plus equals first part of segment dot length like this and here my car progress plus equals s dot length and at the end of this for loop, we could log it, for example, to see if we get a decent number there. Save, refresh, and open the developer tools. And we should see here this number zero appearing there. And when moving the car, that number changes there. But those values are distances in this virtual space that we are in. They are not that meaningful. I would like this progress to be a percent. So going back here, after we get all of this progress counted as the total length of the distance traveled so far, we are going to divide the progress by the total distance. And this we can get easily. We can just go through the corridor skeleton and add up all of the things. I'm going to use reduce 
and then here add each segment length to the previous sum and we start off at zero so this is gonna sum up all of the skeleton lengths let's save and refresh and now that number there shows a value between zero and one Let's go all the way to the end and um, see if it really becomes one when we are at the target. Whew. I didn't crash. I really hope I don't crash now. It's so close. It's uh, the most painful when it happens <laughs> at the end. Okay, and you can see the number is actually above one. So this makes no sense. If we crossed the finish line, it should be one at the max. So we are going to cap it. I'm going to go here and say that if my car progress is greater than one, then my car progress is one. And we can actually finish also give it the finish time like this and I'm gonna set it to the frame count this will be a variable that increases let's define it here above animate set it equal to zero and it's gonna increase on each animation loop here We're using the frame count and not some kind of date time measurement because it's more reliable. This game can run faster or slower on our different computers and the frame count is the most reliable thing to count time here. Now let's save and refresh and try to finish the race again. Okay. And let's see if that progress still gets above one. And looks like not, it's still one there. But um, once it's one, <laughs> 100% it shouldn't anymore update like this if I'm going back so this is one problem but uh, we should have a finish time so let's check this finish time in the console here these logs are just too much so I'm going to open the sources here and um, put a breakpoint here and check the my car finish time. So it is there, it does have a value. Let's now go back here and update the logic so that this progress is not anymore changed after we have a finish time. So if my car doesn't have a finish time, then we do all of this stuff. And now you see this piece of code is horrible here. It made our animate function three times larger than before. So let's take it out as its uh, own function. It's going to be, let's say, update car progress. And we can specify which car we want to update. So in this case, this was all based on my car but we can run this code for any car, really. And then here, paste this code, like so. And let's carefully rename here my car with car everywhere, the new parameter name. Make sure that we are not missing any one of them. Okay, and now here, instead of that ugly code, we can just type update car progress with just my car for now. Let's save this 
refresh the page and everything still seems to work. The progress is still appearing there. Now let's have statistics for all the cars listing their progress here on the right. We're gonna go in race HTML at the top and define a new div here. Let's call it statistics and close the tag. And let's style this similarly to the um, minimap here. So I'm going to say statistics, addressing it based on its ID here. And let's just copy this and um, also this black background from here. And I don't want this to have such a huge rounded border. So let's replace this with maybe 10 pixels. And it should align to top, not to bottom, so that it fills the remaining space above the minimap. So top here. Now we have to set its width and height from race.js at the very top, the same way that we are doing here. And I don't really like this hard-coded value here. So let me just go at the top here and uh, define right panel width, like so. And paste this here, here, and here. And now these new statistics can be styled as well. So the width is going to be the right panel width in pixels and the height is going to be the full window height like so but we have to subtract this right panel width which is the size of the minimap and then in pixels I think let's save and refresh and it's too big it needs to subtract here these uh, margins. I think it's maybe 40. Mm, no, we need also one more. 40 is this plus this, but I want some space in there. So 60 should do. Okay. And now let's generate them based on the cars that we have. So after we have our cars here, Let's do a loop and go through all of them one by one, like this, and create a new div for each one inside of that statistics container. Creating a new div and let's give it an ID. This will be stat underscore I, so stat underscore zero, one, two, depending on which car it is uh, for. And then the inner text, well, let's just put I there for now. And to tell them apart, let's give this div a color and the car's color. So something like this should make it somehow understandable which is which. And let's append this div to the statistics container like so. And refresh. And there are numbers here, but they're not colored. And um, here you can't really see them. Why is the color not appearing there? So the car color, are we not storing this? Mm, yes, it's not stored as an attribute. And uh, this control type is not stored as an attribute either. Let's add these here. So um, the car remembers what color it should have and also the type. The car should know if it's controlled by us or by AI. We're going to need this later. Now save and refresh and the colors are here, but this is very hard to read. We're going to have to style this. 
going back to race.js, I'm going to give a class to this div here. Let's say stat, like so. And in style CSS, this stat class this time, so dot stat. I want a bigger font size, maybe XX large. And I like to use Arial. Save, refresh, and let's give them some padding also. Maybe padding 10 pixels. Save, refresh. Okay, and I don't want them to escape from here. So let's um, give this statistics uh, scroll bar on the right. I'm going to just type here overflow to auto and now it looks like this but there is no information here so we have to update the car progress for each of these cars do a loop and then put the values here the progress in race.js at the bottom of this animate function here we are going to loop here like this and update car progress and after that we are going to get a reference of the stat underscore i like this and let's update its style so the color is going to be that of cars of i like this and the inner text let's make it say i starting at zero um, let's put i plus one here so that we start counting it at one and then column and then let's print here cars of i dot progress times a hundred and let's add the percent symbol as well Maybe this value is um, not that great because it's going to have many floating point, um, many decimals there. So we can do uh, two fixed and keep just one of them. And um, my car here, we want to use cars of I like this. Now save and refresh. And you can see here the values mm, changing. One of them should be changing, but it's probably off screen here. It's uh, this one. Wow, it's uh, really going fast. Let's try to catch up. So our percentage is there at the top. It's not very visible because this dark blue color is, uh, oh, wow is not that readable we are gonna have to do something about that wow it's even coming back that's a very difficult to beat car okay and then we are at 100 percent there so i was expecting to see here the car that won first not me and um it's not. So we have to sort this list. And we need to do that after updating this car progress. So um, let's copy this for loop here and close it here. We're going to do the sorting here. And then this visualizing of the stats happens with the sorted cars. So let's sort and say sort so that it's going to be based on the progress and it's going to be the biggest progress first. Let's save and refresh. And now you see that my car is not the first one anymore. It's not even on this visible list. Uh, let's change that. I'm going to go and accelerate and now I'm, I'm the second. 
<laughs> this was easy. This round was not very difficult. So you can also see the progress of both of us being marked there. We don't really need this debugging anymore. I think it's it's good now. And now the sorting there does seem to work. But something is not right. Where is the right hand rule car? It should be winning. I mean, it shouldn't be winning necessarily because I'm so good, but uh, um, it should be doing good. And it's not here, apparently. I think that um, when we load the cars here and do the mutation, yes, it's... Uh, loading that one, the one that we trained manually, and that will become cars of zero. All the other ones that are not zero get mutated. So then my car is car of zero, so it has the that good brain, but it's not performing there. So I think that we want to mutate only when i is greater than one. So then we should have it there as well. Let's save and refresh. And I think it's that one. It looks very professional. <laughs> Let's go try to tail it there and uh, see what happens if it wins. It should be able to win, I, I think so. Let's have it win and then see how our score is updated after that. Yeah. Okay, so now... A hundred percent. Okay, it won. And it's not updating anymore, so it's the winner. And now we're going to be second place. Okay, good. I want this to show the finish time. When did it uh, finish? So let's go here and clean up a bit. In the update car progress, these were mostly just debugging prints there and also this point being drawn and this console log can be removed it's really lagging now the interface because all the cars are doing all that stuff and when updating these statistics here after this line we want to check if the car has a finish time and if it does i'm just going to append it to the stat inner text like this. Now let's try again. Save and refresh. And no more of those markings there on the road. And no more logs in the console. So this is working much smoother than previously. And let's see if my finish time appears there okay so it seems to be 2402 And the other one is 3073. So these are number of frames that passed since the beginning. And um, we could divide this by 60 because we expect to have 60 frames per second. So then we're kind of going to get seconds there. But I don't like this interface here. I almost can't read this one. So let me give a different background color for our car. So 
let's give this stat style background color depending on the car of I type. If it's an AI car, then it's gonna have a black background color. Otherwise, it's gonna have a white. I think that that blue is um, dark enough so that it looks good on white and it's really gonna distinguish those things. Save and refresh. And uh, it's not here, but that's because we are not on the podium. Okay, so now it's much better to see what we have here. And wow, this actually looks like a race. <laughs> Let me try to win it. Uh huh. Careful. Careful, 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 careful. I'm not gonna win it. No. Okay, but I'm gonna be third. Okay, I'm the third. Nice. And let's see if these manage to complete it, the orange one. Okay, it's the fourth there and the fifth. Let's add the name of the car here and also uh, format this better, nicer somehow. I would also like to see if the cars are damaged. So let's try to do all of these now. In the generate cars function here, I think that we can say car.name. If the type is an AI car, then let's call it AI concatenate with I. So AI1, AI2, AI3. AI, AI1 will be the right-hand rule car. And then me, otherwise, if it's not an AI car. And um, I don't want to see the progress anymore. It's just useful for the implementation of this sorting and figuring out who the winner is. But instead, I think the name should appear here. So... Let's put cars of I dot name now and um, let's check if the car is damaged. Then we put there damaged. Otherwise, nothing. So it's going to be this empty string. And this finish time, let's make it go on the right as much as possible. So I'm going to replace this inner text with inner HTML because I want to start here with uh, span and make it float to the right like this and let's concatenate with this and uh, remove those many decimals if they appear there so I am just going to put here two fixed with one and finally let's concatenate with s for seconds and span it's not going to be exactly in seconds but about right now save and refresh and uh, this is already showing different maybe this damaged can be an emoji let's see so here, instead of this text, let's just put this emoji. You can find it in the description. Let's save and refresh. And uh, it doesn't seem to work. We need to change this encoding. So Control shift p change file encoding, save with encoding. And I'm going to use this one and refresh. And now that is appearing there. And let's try to finish to see if the finish time is appearing as well. Okay. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> okay. So I get the skeleton there, but uh, also the finish time appearing. I think that's fine.
29 seconds wow let's see how long it takes for the right hand rule car so this is ai1 here 51.2 okay and it didn't crash so that's good One thing that I still want to have here is every time I refresh, things start before I have a chance to start. So I want to have a counter here, like three, two, one, and um, only then things start to move. So let's go back to race HTML and um, copy this statistics div, rename it to counter and uh, save this file and then race.js go here before we start to animate and uh, let's give it an inner text let's say three and now a timeout a one second timeout with a callback function where we set the inner text to two and let's close this with 1000 milliseconds here. So one second. And now I'm going to copy this inside here. So another one with one. And here, a very good example of a callback hell. And in the end, nothing there. So I just remove everything from there now let's save and refresh and uh oh it's actually there refresh three two one go so same kind of problem like before with the mini map in the very beginning we're gonna have to go and style it and give it this absolute positioning so i'm gonna give it absolute positioning like that and align it in the center of the screen. So 50% from the left and from the top, transform, translate, minus 50%, minus 50%. Otherwise the top left of the counter is going to be in the center, but we want it to be in the center. And I'm gonna use a very big font size, maybe relative to the viewport min, something like this. And this looks much more like it, but I don't like the font. So um, let's put here Arial. Okay, and um, it's kind of overlapping this, but at full screen size without the developer tools. I think this looks nice. Let's uh, give it some opacity as well. Okay, let's see how it looks like uh, white. I think this is better. But things are starting before the counter ends. And um, this code here is a mess again. Let's wrap it in uh, a function called start counter like this and move this function just above animate here and call it above animate like this and actually start the game here so we will have started is equal to true and at the top here, just below the frame count, started is false. Maybe the frame count should be set to zero here as well. Yeah, so that we don't have any surprises like uh, racing time taking longer than expected. Okay. 
But uh, in Animate, we don't want the cars to update, not before we have started. So last thing we need to do here is if started, then do this for loop. Let's save. And they seem to be waiting. Let's refresh. I can't move. I'm trying to press. Now I'm going as fast as I can. Haha. <laughs> they are not anymore going ahead of me in the beginning because it. I crashed. Yeah, okay. So I like it. I think this is good. Let's try to finish as fast as we can. All right. 20.6 seconds. I don't like that here at the end the borders are like that because I think that training cars to just smash in the border is um, not nice. And if they don't do that, they won't pass here with the full speed. So what we're going to do is extend this end somehow. Let's do this final thing here now. Inside of world.js, when we are constructing the corridor, when generating this corridor here, after we have all these individual segments, we're gonna add one more at the end. And we're just gonna continue the last segment one more time, like afterwards. So let's take here the last segment as the segs length minus one, like that. And uh, let's get its direction vector. We can do that with direction vector method. And now let's push a new segment here. So push a new segment and we're going to take the last point of the last segment so last seg.p2 and then we are going to add to this p2 a new vector that will be this last seg there but this is normalized so we need to scale it by something by some amount and um we could use the road width. It's good to reuse these parameters if possible. Let's see how this looks like. But uh, I don't want this to be included at the end here in the skeleton because that means the 100% it's not where the target is. It's really at the end again. So we didn't do anything. We didn't solve the problem. So we have to remove now the last segment after the envelopes are generated like so this is kind of confusing and uh, not expected like why would the corridor do this we're gonna have to parameterize this a little bit to make more sense but let's see if it works so save refresh and let's see what is there at the end and i'm gonna try to go as fast as I can and really hope that I don't have to start over again. Okay, yeah, so it looks better. I think we can do even more, maybe twice this um, road width. Let's see what this car is doing and uh, if it's going at a better speed here, not slowing down in any way. I think it won't slow down. Yeah. 
Okay, let's still increase it a little bit more. So here we're gonna have road width times two maybe. And let's make this a little bit clearer. So we need an extra parameter here that says if we are going to extend the end. And by default, this is not. But if it is true, then we do this extra thing here, like so. And we also need to pop only then. I think this logic could be made much better, but um, I'm running out of patience here. So we only extend the end like that if the parameter here is set to true. So in race.js, where we do that at the top here when generating the corridor, we need to say that we want to extend the end. Save, refresh, and let's try again to beat the previous record. Was it 17 something? Oy. Very difficult and somehow not very intuitive. Okay, ah, uh, I tried stopping, but I couldn't, I still crashed. But a new record, yay. <laughs> Let's see what the other cars are doing. Seems like there are some. I think the blue one there is the right-hand rule car. Let's see what happens to these. Okay. Right. So um, I think that AI81 is the winner so far from the AI cars. AI1 seems to take 50.4 seconds.